Hey, I'm Jocelyn and this is Sandra and today on our cocktail Friday we are going to make a Sazerac. This is a really important cocktail to the south, um, specifically New Orleans. Um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about the history? I know it's a really old drink, so let's bring it into the future. It is. It's been around for a very long time since the mid-19th century. Um, and it's the official cocktail of New Orleans, actually. And so if you think about New Orleans, which is a drinking <laughs> town, for them to have chosen this particular drink as the official cocktail is quite a thing. So I think that's a really big thing because... I mean, that's like a feather in your cap. If you have made a drink that like New Orleans says is theirs, like that's, I don't know. That's, that's just a, a big that's thing, a, right? That's a drink. Yeah. So I'm going to start out with some herb salt. If you are speaking French correctly, <laughs> if you're speaking New Orleans French, it's herb saint. Um, it's fine. It was developed in New Orleans after uh, absinthe was outlawed. And it's a great substitute. You can you it's it's a uh, anise base, which is a licorice flavor. Some people don't care for it over much, but it's a really specific flavor, and it's important in a lot of cocktails. Mm -hmm. So you can use Pernod if you have that. You can use actual absinthe because it's been made legal again. So we're just I like herbs on. I'm going to use this. It's what I have. Use what you have. <coughs> use what you like. And I'm just going to pour in a hint, and then. I'm going to swirl, swirl around right. the glass. Now observe. Just dump it. This is what we call, like, we're glazing the glass. We or, just want to get that that smell, right? Right. Basically, this, the scent and just that hint, it's pretty powerful flavor. Yeah. So all you need to do is rinse your glass with it, and you have a, a glaze. I can smell it standing over here. I right. mean, she's not even doing anything with it, and there's none left in the glass except for what has clung to the sides. Um, so if you don't love black licorice, when you do this, just add a little bit less to the glass. Um, it's more about the nose than it is about the tongue. Like Absolutely. This, right? Absolutely. So, and you uh, can make it without the anise, but you really, you're not making it. It's not a Sazerac anymore. It's, it's a Sazer. Or it's an Iraq. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's not exactly a Sazerac, right? It's not a Sazerac. Um, yeah, and this is, I, I think it's important to like note how people drank in history. I love, I love old cocktails because they're so different than what we do and what we make today. And so every generation, you know, is leaving their mark on the bartending world. And this is a very old one. So I think it's cool to have, you know, repeat our history in, in some respects. I think so too. And At least with drinks. <laughs> we're seeing a, a lot of these old school cocktails really have a resurgence. Yeah. And I'm so glad because they're really great. They've kind of been a little bit lost. And they let a lot of the flavors of the... The alcohol. There's nuances. Shine through. Things like herb salt. They're, you know, they're herbaceous. They're stronger and they're different. And I think it's really important that we're bringing some of those history things back. But you and I are both students of history. So, so. yeah, we might be biased. We might. We might. So I have uh, my shaker, as you saw, I filled it with ice and I put two ounces of bourbon. Now, there is also a raging debate about whether one should use bourbon or rye. Mm -hmm. It is your preference. I am a bourbon girl. Jocelyn is a bourbon girl. Bourbon. For the and win. so we use bourbon. If you don't like bourbon and you want to use rye, use it. Use it. Absolutely. So uh, two <clears throat> ounces of bourbon. And we're just going to put in a dash of Peychaud's. And it must be Peychaud's to make a proper Sazerac. Yes, absolutely. And then one teaspoon simple syrup. I love that she measures her teaspoons. I'm like, Boop. well, <laughs> I'm doing this for you, gentle viewer, so that you all <laughs> have an understanding, oops, of exactly what you need to put in as you're trying to learn how to make these yourself. So, so this, this is a shaker. I like this Let's one. shake it. Play my song. Pour that puppy glass. right in that glass. They're so pretty. Lovely. I love this like kind of peachy apricot color. Um, and a lot of that comes from the patients adding to the bourbon. And I just think it's beautiful. I call it Amber Glory. Amber Glory. So it's like Amber Glory. I'm going to take uh, my kind of a wide swath of 
lemon peel. Let me just right. get some of that oil on there and drop it in the glass. Awesome. Let's see what you think. Thank you very much. So I'm going to tell you this for those of you who hate anise or black licorice. I almost can't smell that at all, partially because I'm smelling a lot of lemon. So rubbing that lemon around the rim is a really important thing. So now I'll taste. Such a good drink. Is it good? I mean, I, it is, it is New Orleans. I mean, I feel like I am <laughs> in some really fantastic bar, like a hotel bar and, you know, just sitting back, maybe next to a fireplace, hanging out with my girlfriends and having drinks and this, this is it, isn't it? This is that just is, what it is. That is what the flavor of New Orleans. Absolutely. So cheers, y'all. We will see you next Friday for another cocktail.